Well, we're back working on the Connie Project. Oh, boy. What a project <laughs> it has been. Uh, if you've been following along, on Tuesdays, we've, we're tearing yeah. down and rebuilding three of these Bachman uh, early uh, outside frame consolidations, known affectionately by everybody as the Connie. Right. So they're all being torn down to get new gears because one of the main engineering flaws in this model was it had nylon gears that just break. Ugh, I still can't figure that one out. Anyway, in putting in the new gears, I was able to completely screw up the valve timing. So that's got to be revisited. Okay, so with, with, the, with the eccentric straight down like that, all the screws straight down, all the, all the crank nuts, this should go on tilted slightly forward. And this is hex head, so you can you can get it in only in one of six positions. I mean, once I you get it, it'll go on the right way. So that one's on right. Got it. Anyway, in spite of the fact that Don showed us completely how to do this, I still completely screwed it up. Oh, no. If you're here looking for how to time your locomotive, we're going to dive into that 10 minutes into this. So you can just skip forward 10 minutes, and I'll show you exactly how to set <laughs> your valve timing. But in the meantime, we need to revisit the other problem that we had with this guy. And that was while I was trying to set the valve timing, I thought, well, I'll just put it on the railroad and try to run it. And as soon as I set it on the railroad, it shorted the whole railroad out. Oh, my gosh. There it is, dead short. So I put the meter on there, and it shows an absolute dead short. Now, uh, last week, we converted the whole railroad over to DCC. So when you short out the DCC the short out lights come on and everything starts blinking on and off. And that's what happened. It completely shorted out the DCC when I attempted to run it. And when I put the meter on there, dead short. So this is how I'm hooking the meter to the locomotive on the one connector that goes between the locomotive and the tender. Those two connectors right there are track power. So I just plugged these little fine wires in there and that allowed me to connect my meter to it. So I could go looking for this short and that mess. so I thought, well, we must have messed, we must have messed something up in, in putting in the metal gears that shorted the whole thing out. So it's like, okay, we're revisiting that. Start tearing it all back apart and taking the side rods off. Still shorted. My goodness. So uh, it's like, well, it, the short isn't coming from the side rods. So I started measuring across the drivers, and the drivers aren't shorted to the frame. The drivers aren't shorted to each other. Where the heck is this short coming from? I was losing my mind. I thought, well, I guess the next step will be to pull all the drivers out. But I was able to lift them up, and there it is, still shorted. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was, this went on for like two days, me going, what in the heck? And I put it back together and take it apart and put it back together. And that's how I got the valve timing so screwed up. Well, that would do it. That would do it, <laughs> but I could not find this short. And I finally concluded that the only place that this short could be is in the motor itself. How we were able to short out the motor by changing out the gears is completely beyond me. So I tore the, uh, the boiler off so that I could get into the motor and check the upper part here for a short, because the short had to be up here in the motor someplace. Anyway, as it happens, all three locomotives need to be completely tore down and rewired anyway. Oh my. So let's get started. So to separate the frame from the boiler, start right there, removing that screw from the reversing gear on the engineer's side of the locomotive. You have to separate that linkage because this thing actually has a working reverser. There's also a couple of these steam lines that are just popped into the plastic bits some of those, uh, two of those are hooked to the frame, and so those have to be pulled out from the tank here, and they just slide out. And then the uh, front wheel truck needs to be removed. So there's a single large screw right here that holds the front truck. Once that's off, there's a large screw immediately under it that anchors the front of the boiler to the frame. I'm lost already. I thought we had a dish. <laughs> Put all that stuff in it. <laughs> oh, I started thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose track of all these screws. The next screws that come out are these for the ash pan. And these are little teeny tiny screws that come out. So, yeah, you're right. Everything needs to go into little cups. So I set up a cup here for the ash pan screws. And then I set up a system of cups where 
each uh, section of the locomotive would have its own cups and then I should be able to figure out based on the size of the screw where they go. So I labeled everything. Thank goodness because ah uh. So a cup for everything and everything in its cup and everything. I felt like Martha Stewart. Well, there, there's the way to be. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be important when it comes time to putting all this back together. Well, once you remove the ash pan, there's the flickering firebox uh, lights. And inside there with the flickering firebox lights are four large screws. Now, there's also these little metal tabs that go from the frame to the boiler. And that's just a little notch tab. You just push that over with your finger and that should separate the boiler from the frame. Now, this is the wire that goes to the motor and you've got to just unplug that. Fortunately, it's just on a plug. So you can just unplug it. And at that point, your boiler is separated from your frame. Wow. <laughs> My. <laughs> it was, it was a, 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 bit of, a bit of work getting here, but we now have a two-piece locomotive and the key is we have a frame that's completely separated so I can figure out where the short is in the frame. And actually having the boiler off like this is going to make uh, painting and weathering a lot simpler too. Oh, absolutely. So let's find this stupid short. And there it is. Uh-huh. The motor is shorted. What? Why is that? How? What? But when I hook the motor to the meter, dead short. When I hooked the, the motor directly to the railroad, dead short. So I tried hooking it to my DC power supply. And? Ran great. What? Huh? So if you feed this thing direct DC, it works. But if you feed it anything else, it shows as shorted. So next up, we're going to pull the motor out. And that means uncovering the gears again. So you have to remove the, the gear cover or the motor can't be lifted up. So those four screws come out and then these two screws on the top, this is the motor mount for the electric motor and it's just anchored at one end because the whole thing has to be able to pivot around with the suspension. So you pull out those two screws and now the motor is completely separated. And there it is, still showing dead short. Oh my goodness. But I'm looking at this going, there's a circuit board on the top of this motor that doesn't make sense at all. I don't know what that thing does. It's just up there. And it's like, why aren't they just feeding the power directly to the motor? Ah. I could call Bachman. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I, yeah, a few, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just pulled the board off. Uh huh. And there's the short right there. So I don't know what this board does, but it allows DC to run directly to the motor, but it will not allow DCC or my meter or anything else sees this thing as a short but dc passes through it directly to the motor and it runs normally so does that mean it needs to run on a battery well it just means that this board has to go in the garbage can <laughs> okay no battery batteries not included there so i unsoldered the board and just hooked the cable directly to the motor and the problem is now sitting there on the bench freestanding and when I looked at the, the parts bag from the other locomotive from Great Britain, that board had been removed from it, too. I see. But there it is, hooked up to the railroad, working just fine. I see the gear turning. Yep, there it I've, is. I've assigned it address zero, and it's now working <laughs> just fine. That's a good address. <laughs> I, I think that board has something to do with the lighting circuit or something. Anyway... It's going in the garbage can. I see. And now we have a working frame here. Anyway, let's get back now to retiming the valve mechanism. Okay. Because I can't test this because it's jamming up because the valves are all out of time. So I'm sitting there. I tried this. I tried this. It kept jamming. Well, the other Connie's just sitting right there. Ah. <laughs> It's, it's timed correctly, so all I have to do is match what's going on with this one. So with the valve timing all the way to the back, the counterweights are at about a 45 degree angle facing the back of the locomotive. Set it like that on both sides, perfect. Oh, look at that. The valves are now timed correctly. So all you have to do is match everything to that picture I just showed you if you need to retime your Connie. And there it is. Short's gone. Valves are properly timed. Mechanism is now running smoothly from DCC. Just at address zero. I don't have a DCC controller board in here yet. 
but um, it's running smoothly and we're ready now to move on to uh, installing the sound system which goes in the tender. Nice. So that's where we'll pick the story up from. First tearing the tender apart and then installing the Tsunami 2 board and the speaker in the tender and getting the sound system up and working and then figuring out uh, uh, how we're going to cable the tender to the locomotive to bring the controls from the soundboard up to the lights and the motor in the locomotive. So that's what we'll pick it up uh, next time. <laughs> in the meantime, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe and hit your notification bells so you can find out when we're going to tear down the tender. And the easy way to do that is with the blue button. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Well, we're not sure how you found this uh, video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring because it's kind of uh, specific to a certain cause. And we'll see you on Sunday.